Steve, you've had a very successful unveiling of this new McLaren that you'll be competing with. This is not a project you take on lightly. Give me some of the background as to how you came to this decision and how the partnership with McLaren came together. Yeah, so it's been uh, been a really amazing, you know, 40 years almost of Porsche, right? And it's been, it's been a very long time. Um, you know, we, we were a customer racing with them, obviously, in our modern guys since 2014. Um, and it's been a great partnership with them in a way. Um, but in that sense, partner was a bit of a stretch. We were a customer. Uh, whereas a McLaren had an opportunity to, you know, to represent them, you know, in GTD programming, so, um, which is a great stepping stone for our program. But then also, you know, being such a young company, you know, the future growth opportunities uh, with them are, are incredible. It was, you know, we'll get in there on the ground level with them and, and we can almost grow up together. So um, it's something that's really exciting for us. and. Um, it's, not to mention, so it's a pretty good looking car as well. It, it is a good looking car and I'll talk more about that. Yeah. But how do you make that decision and how do you bring your, your team on board with that decision as well? Because they too have been part of the Porsche family. Absolutely, yeah. So um, it's a decision we don't make lightly. So it starts in a very small room, as you can imagine. Um, you know, Chris Faf and I uh, and Lawrence actually, you know, we batted the idea around a little bit. Um, you know, then you, you kind of you pursue it and you see, you know, does this have legitimacy? And then, then you got to start bringing your partners in. So, um, you know, partners are like what we do. So, you know, initial conversations, driveway, you know, also the entire, um, making sure that they're, um, the major players are on board, you know, if we were to switch, uh, and then you have to present it to the team. Um, and, you know, for 22 individuals, this is no library, right? So, um, it's not a decision we took lightly. It's a decision that we presented to them. You know, and, and exactly the way it's, it is. You know, hey, this is this is what we're presented with. This is what we believe it can lead to. Um, are you in or are you out? Really, it comes down to that simple. And you know, we had this conversation internally uh, back in August with everybody, and uh, gave them enough runway where if they did want to not you know, be part of it, they can make that decision. And you know, thankfully, every single individual in the team got excited and said, "Hey, you know, that's that's a new challenge. That's something we want to be part of." And, you know, we want to be part of, you know, the growth trajectory of McLaren as a brand in GT racing. So uh, they do amazing, amazing stuff, you know, in Formula One and IndyCar and, you know, Extreme E and, and a lot of you know, other, mo other motorsport ventures. But, you know, what's been missing is that connective tissue between the retail network, the dealerships and McLaren racing. So, you know, our job is to be that connective tissue. So that brings up the business aspect of it and the retail part. We, we've got a, a McLaren that you can buy at a at a FAF showroom and the racing car. There are some remarkable similarities. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And that's that's almost the coolest part about this, you know, 720S 3G3 Evo. You know, the, the carbon tub is the same as the road car. I mean, you buy a 720S road car, it's the same tub. Obviously, ours has some safety stuff bolted into it, but it's it's the same tub underneath. But, uh, the engine is virtually identical. Um, the one thing that's different from the 720S is that there's a the turbos. But what's exciting is that the turbos are actually from a different McLaren road car. Now they're actually from the McLaren GT. It's a little bit smaller to make less power than we would find uh, in the 720 just from a homologation standpoint. But you know, those those items that we hope resonate with McLaren road car owners are what we want to talk about and get people excited about. For sure, there's bespoke motorsport stuff like you know this big rear wing and uh, things that make it a, a you know a proper purebred race car. Um, but the amount of similarities between the two is staggering. You have a lot of work to do as we're recording this. We're a couple of weeks out from yeah. race number one. Take me through the process over the next few weeks to get ready for the Rolex. Yeah, so, you know, the car, it looks fairly together, you know, obviously by design, having an event like this, but uh, uh, we got to get the uh, scrutineering system installed, Frank says, so all the cars run a similar scrutineering system. Uh, so that should be in our hands here in days, not weeks. Uh, so we'll have that installed. And then the other part of the prep is all the spares. Uh, in a 24 hour race, so much stuff can happen. Uh, so being completely prepared with, you know, suspension corners and body work and stuff that's ready to be put on the car at a moment's notice is key for our success. So um, there is a lot to do. Changing brands is a lot because there's nothing from our, you know, previous portion that can be carried over. Whereas, you know, even in previous years when we switched to a new car, there was still some continuity. Whereas now it is 100% different. There is not a single thing that's continuous between the two cars. So. Um, it's a lot of work, but, you know, everybody on the South Florida sports team was extremely passionate and uh, nobody worked Christmas Day, thankfully, or, or well, we'll work New Year's Day, but every other day is it's a work day. You know? There's got to be a lot of learning as well. You have to deal with the balance of performance, which is keeping the competition fair yep. when you hit the racetrack. So there's got to be learning there. And I suspect throughout this 
first full season especially? Yeah, well, we're going to learn for sure. Um, but with that comes opportunity. And, you know, our team is so dedicated to seeing this partnership be successful um, that we're going to be learning every session, every time the car is on track, test days. I mean, even with a new tire this year, it's almost a perfect storm, right? Because a lot of teams are going to have their notebooks from previous years thrown in the garbage. So I would almost go as far as to say that we would have a leg up because we're not going in with preconceived notions of, you know, what worked with a car on the previous tire. We're going in with a new tire. But also a brand new car to us, so we're going in wholeheartedly, you know, with our experience, but you know, solving our own problems as well. I know everyone was happy to see that there is some plaid on this new race car. The connection that you have made with the Canadian fans has been staggering yeah. from the first reveal to the the driver suits that you did one year. But it, it it's a it's it's a, a comfort, but it's also this is the hometown that we want to cheer for. So uh, and I think the, the content that you create establishes that social connection as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're Canadian, right? Like, we're, we're proud Canadians. And, um, you know, we, we had to grow up a little bit, right? Like, there's, you know, there's big dollars at play here. This is a business. Um, but, you know, we had to keep some of our iconic plaid on the car. And, um, you know, kudos to McLaren for, for helping us, you know, find that common middle ground, that, that check boxes for everybody. And, um, yeah, the, the social media content is, is fun. We have fun with it, right? I mean, uh, racing is an incredible sport, but you know it's got to be fun, and, and it's what people do in their pastime. And uh, we want to make sure that we connect with the fans in a different way, because uh, in the grand scheme of the sports landscape, we are relatively small. So you know, let's let's have some fun with the people and show a little bit of behind the scenes and what we're all about. Because at the end of the day, we're all just car guys and car gals that love the sport and love love automotive industry in general. Once again, FAF Motorsports will have a new driver lineup this year as well, in addition to a new car. But but you have some talented drivers that are coming in, particularly with all, Oliver and uh, Marvin. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Marvin might not be a household name. Marvin uh, Kirkhoffer here in North America, but I I'm confident he will be. I mean, he's, he's quick like a bunny and definitely uh, um, you know, has the most experience with the car. And, you know, Ollie Jarvis is probably more of a... Uh, a known quantity to, to North American sports car racing fans and you know his transition to GT with us is something that's very exciting for him exciting for us and the experience he could bring to level up our program is incredible and I mean you know, having two additional drivers for the endurance races is something that's also very exciting that will be Alexander Rossi and James Hinchcliffe what do they bring to the team um, definitely a little bit of North American flair um, you know with Alex being uh, you know former Formula One driver an Indy 500 winner. You know, the way he approaches his craft is, is very special. You could tell he's laser focused on, you know, on the competition side and making sure he can get the job done in the car. Uh, you know, and James is uh, James, is someone we've been trying to work with for a really long time. He's I mean, Canadian. We're a Canadian race team. We really wanted that connection uh, with the Canadian drivers. So, I'm um, getting a chance to work with James. I know he's, you know, transitioning to, you know, a bit of a, a similar role to to you. But, you know, being able to still be a driver for him is is incredible. I mean, his experience in IndyCar and being an Indy 500, you know, pole winner. And he has a lot of open wheel experience. But he's also got, you know, a good amount of GT experience as well from his days with Mazda. So I'm um, really excited to work with him. And um, yeah, definitely going to be a, probably a very popular car with the fans when we get to Daytona as well. I'm sure. Now, as you go into this year with all that's new, what are your goals? What are your expectations? I mean, the expectations to, to be competitive, right? I mean, as long as every session we're better than the session before and learning as a team, I mean, that has to be the goal in the first year of the new program and new car. Uh, you know, if we can get to the Le Mans in, uh, in October uh, with a chance at a championship, that's fantastic. But, you know, being realistic, if we're, you know, finishing every lap of every race and, you know, building that notebook for, for success in 2025, that's okay too. So um, we'll, we'll be realistic and grounded with, with where we expect our finishes to be, but at the same time, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic that, um, you know, some McLaren 720S GT3 will be quite strong as well.